The last 12 months have been, well, interesting for the travel community. Shifting information, uncertainty, health information, unanswerable questions, and a burning desire to go someplace. Everybody wants to go someplace. And now it feels like we're almost all the way through. And we're going to get back to normal business. I'm using finger quotes liberally there. Well, on today's show, we're talking with one of the power brokers in the industry, Bob Duglin, Vice President, International Membership and Host Agencies for ASTA. You know ASTA, the American Society of Travel Advisors. Get your questions ready because we're going to ask questions about all things ASTA today on Travel Think Tank. Welcome. This is our weekly discussion. It's a round table. That means we want to hear what's on your mind while we drill Bob for lots of information. That's my job. I'm Pat Miller. I'm the host of The Hub and Travel Agent TV. This is where the travel, in, travel industry is together under one roof. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'd love it if you would click that subscribe button. That way you won't miss our interviews with thought leaders and travel experts that we put up here on our YouTube channel. Or of course, our Facebook group, go to facebook.com slash groups slash travel ATV, and you can be a part of the group that we're building there on Facebook. Of course, a reminder, it's 100% interactive. If you have a question, put it in the chat and we'll include you in the conversation. Speaking of including you, speaking of the hub, speaking of information and smart people, Tom Brousseau. Hello, sir, my partner with the hub. How are you today? Hey, I'm very good. And hello, Pat Miller. Hello to all of you. And Hello to Bob Duglin. I'm so glad you're here with us today. It's exciting. We're going to get Bob here on the air. He's the Vice President, International Membership of Host Agencies for ASTA, the American Society of Travel Advisors. So, Bob, uh, welcome, my friend. How are you today? Thank you. Uh, Pat, doing well. Tom, it's a pleasure to be with you and be with everybody on the call today. And never better. We're really uh, forging ahead. So are you feeling it? Tell us what the feeling is amongst the members and the leadership at ASTA. Are you feeling it starting to come back now, Bob? Absolutely. Uh, you know, in, in speaking to our members, looking on the website, you know, seeing our, our own activities pick up, there's an optimism that we haven't had before. People are getting vaccinated. They're traveling. You know, I, I live in South Florida, which is a bit of a tourism mecca. And we've been a little bit busy down here, has kind of been in the news. But, you know, it's nice to see the cruise lines are starting to get back into operation. Uh, I'm actually taking my first uh, international trip outside North America in a few days to go to a conference in Istanbul. And I'm looking forward to getting out there and getting back to it. So I'm curious for someone that travels as much as I'm sure you do. When do you feel like that little buzz of going on a trip? Is it when the plane takes off? Is it packing your suitcase? Is it when you land? Just curious for someone that does what you do. When does when do you get that feeling? Well, you know, it's the anticipation. Uh, you know, it's that it's that planning in advance, and it's more or less once the one trip is done, let's look at the next trip. And you know, like all of us, I think some of our biggest trips over the, the last 12 months have been, uh, for me, wheeling the bin down to the end of my driveway and then looking forward to when it's picked up and going back out again. So now, you know, <laughs> we wanna look at getting those passports out, making those bookings and bringing profitability back to the industry. Yeah, that walk to the end of the driveway in the middle of the pandemic felt like you should buy a souvenir because it felt so good to be out of the house. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, there's a neighbor. I know people. Hi, neighbor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Asta, of course, is a big piece of what's going on in the travel advisor community. Uh, tell us what's happening today with Asta uh, and how it's helping us get through the remainder of the pandemic here. Well, absolutely. You know, you know, ASTA is the, the travel advisors, the travel agents trade association. We're, we're the mouthpiece and the voice for, for all of us in the industry. And, you know, when this pandemic hit, I think there was maybe 30 minutes when we all kind of looked at each other and what the heck's going on. And then we realized we need to get working on advocacy. And it's something that ASTA has done so well. You know, last February was our last big event together. It was our legislative day in Washington, D.C., where our members come and meet with uh, members of Congress and the Senate and talk about important legislative priorities. And when the pandemic hit and we needed to go to them for relief, they knew who we were. And that was, that was really helpful and a good place to be in. With so many agents spread everywhere, many of them independent, 
as to is the body that, you know, legislators and other leaders can recognize as as advocating on their behalf. Is that one of the reasons why it's so important for all of us to make sure that we're a part of the group? Well, absolutely. That, that collective voice is so important. And, you know, whether you're the largest travel agency in the country and, you know, you invested hundreds of thousands in the association or whether you're an independent contractor like I was coming into it, everybody's voice is important and everybody's voice needs to be heard and protected. So let's talk about that importance. Uh, Tom, I know that you're considering an ASTA membership, right? Can you talk about the importance of being in the Industry Trade Association? Sure. Um, well, you know, first of all, you know, we're, you know, all of us in the industry are super familiar with ASTA. We, you know, very recognizable acronym, so to speak. Um, but over the last year, I think, you know, what I've seen is, you know, ASTA has really come, um, you know, to, you uh, to be a, such a strong voice for our industry. You know, they really work very hard on, on you know, financial relief, on things related to, um, you know, policies and legislation and things that as individual travel agents, you know, we could never do. You know, we don't, we just don't have the resources, knowledge, money, whatever it is. So having ASTA out there fighting for us, you know, um, was extremely important. And because of that, you know, I, I have a lot of gratitude Bob towards what ASTA has done. And, you know, I feel like I and we should repay that. Um, and part of how we repay that is to get involved in ASTA and to, you know, pay the, the money that it takes to be a member, to get active in the advocacy. You know, you, we all sort of have to work together uh, to fight some of these battles. And I know you're gonna talk about that in a second, but we all have to work together to fight some of these battles and also just take advantage of all the things that you guys offer. So I just, from my side, wanted to say thank you and know that, you know, as, as a, also an independent agent that, you know, ASTA has a lot to offer. And I personally plan to take advantage of that as soon as I can. Great, well, appreciate that. And, you know, let me make the offer to you. I do want to provide a discount to anybody that would like to join ASTA. It's $199 for an independent contractor. But if you use the code new NEW50, that'll take $50 off for your first year. So, you know, we definitely want to, want to make that available. And, you know, we also have about 50 chapters around the country. And in normal times, we're able to meet, have trade shows, exchange ideas. And although everybody's a competitor, we're also there to help each other in our businesses. And, and hopefully we'll be getting back to that very soon. But it's not only national uh, legislative uh, battles that we take on. There are a lot of state battles. Those of you that were in California may remember AB5, which was trying to respect, uh, restrict independent contractors. There's a bill going in Texas right now uh, regarding hotel taxation. So we're constantly fighting these kind of battles. And as we come out of this pandemic and states and counties and cities are short of money, they're going to look for additional ways to tax people. One of them might be a, a tax on travel agent services that's already come up in five or six different states. So those are the kind of things that we're fighting. And we need you to be out on the front lines. If you see something, let us know about it. Uh, there was an issue in Maryland recently we weren't aware of that one of our members brought up to us. You know, I'm down here in Florida, so I'm looking at, you know, what's happening at the ports in Fort Lauderdale and Miami, uh, so we can get things like that involved. So this is really, a, it's a group collective effort. And the national and local impact, super important. While we're on that topic, can you talk about the SAVE Act in Congress? It's something that's out there. What impact does it have and how can we get involved to support what ASTA is doing? Sure, this is, this is a piece of legislation that's currently been proposed in Congress and I'm putting my, my glasses back on again because I want, <laughs> I want to look at this, you know, as we're speaking here. And, you know, this is a follow up to, you know, the Restart Act and some of the other acts we have. It means the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program, securing access for venue equity. You know, in Washington, they like to bring all these, these letters together and these acronyms together. But what that's going to do is provide industry relief through grants, not through loans, for battered businesses. And that, that could be your local museum, a theater, performing arts center, a travel agency, anybody who's been affected by this. And we need everyone to take a look at this. If you go to asta.org backslash advocacy, asta.org backslash advocacy, and I'll put that in chat, you're going to link into this. And through the link, you put your name and address in there. It'll populate who your member of Congress is. 
And right now we're looking for co-sponsors on that bill. So, you know, I called my congressman's office here in the Fort Lauderdale area to ask them to sign on because uh, my congressman's always very friendly to, to legislative issues, but this makes it real simple. Populate it, email it out, and, and you're good to go. Now, let me ask a question about that. Does that really work? Does it really mean something when we call our uh, representatives and, and tell them how this might impact our business? Do they, like, do they even take the call? Or are you just talking to interns? Tell us what that's like. Well, you know, you probably, you're definitely talking to an intern most <laughs> of the time, uh, but those interns make an impact. You know, that, that 20 year old intern has the ear of the member of Congress. And, you know, the most important thing that these members of Congress wanna do is get reelected. And the only way they're going to re get reelected is to listen to their constituents' concerns. You know, it was kind of interesting. I was meeting with my congressman, a guy's Ted Deutsch, real good guy, and I was meeting with one of his legislative aides. And behind his head was a picture of the map of the district. And I looked at that map and I went, "Oh my God! Cruise planners, World Travel Holdings, all these large host agencies are in his district." So, you know, I made it known the fact that there are tens of thousands of people in the travel industry who, you know, come in through Florida district, I think, I think it's number 20. So this is important. This is what they want to hear about. And, you know, the other thing we do is re we reach out to our members and we have meetings with our members of Congress. These days it's virtual, which works out perfectly for everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll get a call from Evan Peck. He's our uh, executive VP of advocacy. And he'll say, we've got a meeting with a congresswoman in Charleston, South Carolina, who are our members? And we pull them up and it, it's like all of us on the call today. And we meet with this member of Congress. We let them know what's important to them. And we arm you with the facts. You know, if, if you're located in say Charlotte, North Carolina, we will let you know that there are X number of agencies in Charlotte, North Carolina, the, the estimated payroll is $35 million, and these people's businesses are all dependent on the travel industry. So we give you that information you need, uh, Pat. But we don't curse on those calls, right, Bob? We're very professional. We're very, you know, we're very, uh, we're just, I'm teasing. Uh, Molly is on the we call. We try not to. <laughs> we try not to, right? Depends on how the call goes. Uh, Molly, you were talking about the exclusive information on government issues. Can you share a little bit about that, what members receive? Um, yes, there are um, certain things that are that ASTA puts out that everybody can see. And then as a member, there are some exclusives that are for you. A lot of them are forms. A lot of them are um, detailed information on the um, small business loans or the PPP or whatever and how it um, works with travel agencies. So it's the way it's put out, it's more understandable for travel agencies compared to whatever business um, is out there that actually can utilize those same um, promotions. And so it is wonderful. And you asked if, uh, if those emails actually work that go to the congressman, and I will say yes. I have done those several times and I put in my personal comments they usually do the generic email right back, but within usually a week, sometimes less, sometimes more, they will contact me back in some way, shape or form. Uh, one time it was even a phone call. So um, they are paying attention and it does make a difference and it makes it easier for us because um, by having that ability, it's a, it's a quick thing. Um, and especially right now when things are thank God, picking up, um, it does help tremendously. So uh, we're talking today uh, with Bob Duglin, who is the Vice President, International Membership and Host Agencies for ASTA, the American Society of Travel Agents. So Bob, let's talk about what you're looking for in the next three to six months. A as an organization, you're tracking where travel may be headed. Is it really that vaccine number and that lowering that hesitancy to travel? Or are we waiting on a magic wand wave by the CDC? I mean, what are you watching as far as news to break that might help the floodgates reopen? Well, you know, it's interesting as we all know that the answer to that could change in five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I take a look at the cruises and the fact that the CDC has not made a decision or has ruled against cruising. So what did Royal Caribbean Celebrity do? They went over to Nassau, they went to St. Martin, they're opening cruising. Um, I was on a call last week with uh, 
uh, some people in Cyprus and Greece from the tourism ministry. They're reopening up. Uh, again, Royal and Celebrity are going to home port out of Athens and out of Limassol. So they have found a way to safely get back to cruising. And, you know, a lot of the destinations have opened up. Uh, you know, we had a, a chapter president's meeting at Sandals in Jamaica. We did a, a fam and educational journey with Los Cabos. And these destinations are taking really good care to make sure everybody is gonna be safe. They're doing the testing. And, and to be honest with you, I felt safer in Los Cabos than I felt in the US, <laughs> you know, in a year because they had sanitary mats as you walked in. There was somebody taking a temperature and I don't care whether you're in a dive bar or a 7-Eleven or whether you're in a major resort, these protocols are there and you're getting the hand sanitizer. Uh, you know, I, I think we're headed for a good place. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I got COVID. I was hospitalized myself for a week. And, you know, I was happy 30 days later, instead of an all-inclusive at Holy Cross Hospital, my all-inclusive was sandals. So people <laughs> do need to take the precautions that they tell you wear a mask, wear a mask, you know, and do the things we need to do to get back to travel. You know, I, I think in a lot of cases that the vaccine is going to definitely be very helpful. You know, there are people pushing back against that for, you know, whatever their reason may be. But I think the airlines and the cruise lines, we're going to need, uh, you know, that, that URL code initially to get back to normal. Let's talk about the vaccine just for a second. Does ASTA have an official position on a vaccine passport or some other proof of travel? We, we've been working with partners like IATA, Clear, a lot of the airlines on various uh uh, passports that are out there, but we also want people to return to travel safely regardless and to follow all the mandates that are out there and the requirements. And as we've done our meetings in, in other countries, we follow every rule that's out there and, and we're a little tougher with it ourselves because we, we need to protect everybody, but we need to get back to business. It's an interesting nugget you shared that you suffered from COVID. As opposed to being a representative of the travel advisor community and open, 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 like you have a really unique point of view as someone that went through it. Does that offer any credibility in a conversation with uh, a politician or someone that might be skeptical of your motivation to support the industry in an ethical way? Well, you know, I, I never really thought of it from that angle. And to be honest with you, you know, it was you know, the first day or two was scary. But as a travel advisor myself, I saw that. Uh, one of the river cruise lines in Europe were, were offering free cruises to healthcare heroes. So anybody who would listen to me was getting um, a free river cruise on, on Amal waterways <laughs> at Holy Cross that served in healthcare. Yeah. And, you know, and that's one thing I did gain a tremendous appreciation for that I always had are the, these healthcare heroes and these people that are out there keeping us safe and sacrificing their lives every day. They're, they're the real heroes to me, Pat, let me tell you. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're nursed back to health. So one of the big parts of ASTA, of course, is events. So what does the rest of the year look like? Are they all in person? Are they all a virtual, blended? What's on the dance card for events with ASTA? The answer would be yes. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> Sold. You know, because uh, we're, we're constantly trying to, to follow what's happening. We're, our legislative day is coming up in May in Washington, D.C. But right now, we do not have a clearance to hold those meetings in May. So while we're planning it for 25% occupancy, for instance, we'd have 150 people, but we'd be using a ballroom for 600 to make sure there's a lot of space. Mm -hmm. You know, there are plans, but you kind of roll with the punches. Our destination expo in Croatia was postponed twice now, a third time into June. Croatia is open to Americans as of uh, next month or two days from now. So, you know, we are planning for these events and, and our global convention in Chicago, we wanna be there live, but we'll also have a, a virtual component for those that, that aren't able to travel. That's great to hear. Uh, we're excited to see each other in person once again, once it's safe, but uh, those events are gonna be big spots on the calendar. And I just gotta say, Tom and I are right up the road in Milwaukee. So, you know, we need to hook up. I, I know all the good steakhouses in Chicago, you know, so we could uh, oh, this is so done. connect. Come on, we're good. <laughs> Just let us know. We're in. Uh, okay, so what can we do now? If you were just a travel agent like many of us and we're trying to, you know, be a part of the cause and we appreciate the guidance you've given us about contacting our representatives, what else can we do to be part of the solution and how our travelers get back to business safely? Yeah, and, and I think I think the most important thing is is, you know, look to ask to look to your host agency or your consortia, whoever you're affiliated with, to take a look at what the latest information is. Because, you know, getting back to travel now, it's not 
like it used to be. You know, I'm talking about this trip I'm taking to, to Istanbul. Well, I've got three different folders with all sorts of all sorts of things in it and visas and traveler requirements and certificates and, and everything. And, and people getting back to travel just can't do it without you and without the current information. You all know what it's like if, if you've got to go to the Caribbean or Hawaii or places like that, what people need. And you know, I, I traveled to Hawaii and there was somebody in line behind me that didn't do their online certification or get their test. They were immediately put into a 10 day quarantine. If they used a travel advisor, that would not have happened. And you know we're, we're talking about all this critical information, but I want to throw a couple of things out there that, that we have as ASTA member benefits that, that are kind of fun. Ace Hardware, Office Depot, UPS, batteries and bulbs, which is right down the street from me. And you know that oddball battery you can never find, they always have. So it's something small. And importantly, for those of us that are independent contractors, we have uh, a group health insurance plan that's valid in 38 states. And that health insurance price is competitive, if not lower than what you see in the, the national marketplace or Obamacare that's out there. And there's also E&O. So these are, these are great things to know. And the other thing I want to mention uh, for, for our area and independent contractors is that unemployment compensation is still available through federal pandemic unemployment insurance now through September with the latest bill that's out there. And, you know, Pat, that's what I wound up doing. Instead of booking and travel and, 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 and doing all this great stuff last year, I wound up trying to become an expert to help our members in 50 different states and in four territories as to how they collect unemployment compensation. So we all had to shift. Along those lines, it was just announced that the second round of the PPP has been extended to May 31st as a deadline. So if you have not gone back through and compared your 2019 quarter lease to your 2020 quarter lease, it could be well worth it, not to mention they've changed the formulation. It used to be two and a half times your payroll and rent. Now it's two and a half times, I think it's your overall income, which is a, a Schedule C line seven, I think is what it is. Regardless, it's a significant increase in the amount of money you could get. So if you've not looked into the PPP, they've extended the deadline from March 31st, which would have been tomorrow, to May 31st, and it's definitely worth it if you qualify. So Carrie had asked a question in the chat about your health insurance programs. Can you elaborate just a little bit about how those work and just tell us the 30 second elevator pitch about them because it could come in really handy for some. Sure, absolutely. And, and Carrie, what happens is you, you go ahead on to to asta.org, log in as a member, look under member benefits. You get a link to the health insurance. You fill out the initial application online and someone contacts you because the rates will vary based on what state you're in, what pre-existing you may have, whether this is individual or family or group or, or however. Okay, great. Uh, so let's talk about another question that came in. Uh, Jennifer was asking about membership and you saved the, you shared the discount code, save 50 for $50 off for first time. And really new, 50. That. new 50, new excuse 50. me, new 50. Yeah. Me and my note taking. And, and you know that. what? Maybe I said save 50. I'm old. No, <laughs> no I, I 100% <laughs> blame me. Um, but she was curious about agency pricing. Is it the same? You just buy a membership for everybody or is there an agency deal? There, 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 there are agency memberships. The prices started at 325 uh, and that's value driven, volume, volume driven, depending on, you know, your, uh, your, your agency volume. I think everybody's is really not that great for 2020, but that also covers up to five W2 employees on your staff. Okay, great. We appreciate that. Uh, we're sure. talking with Bob Douglin. Any final questions that you want to get in, get it into the chat now. Uh, that way we can include it. Uh, I think we have from Red, she was complimenting Asta's health insurance policy. It was not a tax government health insurance plan. She said that she used it for a few years. Uh, so kudos to you and the program. It, it's been great to have you on the show to, to talk a little bit about everything that Asta is doing to fight for the industry and uh, help us come out of this uh, as best as we can. Is there anything we haven't covered that you want to make sure that you include while you're talking to not only the folks that are on the call, but everyone on Travel Agent TV? Well, I, I want to thank everybody. You know, if you're a member, thank you. If you're going to be a member, thank you. Uh, you know, we really appreciate your support, but stay healthy mentally, financially, and, you know, get involved with your trade association. Make a difference. Uh, everybody on this call can be part of the association and, uh, you know, would absolutely uh, 
love to love to speak with you. And my email, by the way, is bob at asta.org. Real simple. Always feel free to reach out. And Pat, Tom, appreciate you having me on. And we, we look forward to, to seeing you again very soon. Well, enjoy your trip to Istanbul and enjoy the time away. Uh, good thanks for coming on today. Bob Douglin, Vice President, International Membership and Host Agencies for ASTA, the American Society of Travel Advisors. So if you're watching us on Travel Agent TV, here's what we'd like you to do. Click subscribe because we're bringing on power brokers and thought leaders on Travel Agent TV all the time. If you click subscribe, we will come to you. Every time we post something new, it'll show up inside your email box. We're also, we would just love it if you'd become a part of our Facebook group as well. It's totally free to do so. Facebook.com slash groups slash travel ATV. For Tom Brousseau, our members on the hub, everyone subscribe to Travel Agent TV. I'm Pat Miller. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.